Hey everyone, it's uh, Pup Twigs here, and joining me for a second podcast is uh, Pup Atlas from Denver, Colorado. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good to see you again, Pup Twigs. Thanks so much for having me on. I know, it's it's always a, a pleasure to have you on, and I know last time we talked, we uh, we kind of dug a little bit into um, uh, the music side of uh, what you do, and wh- I guess as your part of your pastime. And uh, I just want to kind of uh, dig more into that for this podcast, if that's okay. Absolutely. More than happy uh, to answer any questions you got to the best that I can. So Awesome. Well, let's just first find out, how do you choose the songs that you actually like to sing and and put on Instagram? Yeah, uh, great question to start off with. Uh, Honestly, it's kind of a mixture of things. There's some times where I kind of just like a song or... I was at the grocery store or at a restaurant or something. I heard it play on the speakers and I think to myself, that'd be a fun, fun song to, to try out there. Uh, okay. So sometimes it's, 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 I just like the song. There are some times where there's more of a more heartfelt, deeper connection to the song itself. If I really can relate to the lyrics or if I know someone that's kind of going through a similar situation that's being described, uh, I might give it a go as well. Um, sometimes I try to change it up too, right? I do a lot of pop songs, but sometimes I'm like, do I want to try a different genre, uh, or do I want to just try something completely out of the ordinary or do a throwback that maybe some folks that are my age or younger or even older may be reminded of a uh, time in their life. So it's quite a, quite a mixture generally though. It's if I just like the song and a, a big factor, which I'm sure we'll get into this later, but is there a backing track that I can use to record with? Oh, sure. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I'm kind of limited to what's available um, through the different channels I, I go through. Um, I could create a backing track, but it just it takes a lot longer um, right. to kind of to kind of do that from scratch. But if something's made already, I can use that and go from there. So okay. quite a mixture of things. And that kind of takes me into the next one is, you know, I'm sure there's a, a quite a hefty production side of it. So what does the production side of it look like? And what kind of equipment and tools do you need to produce one of these songs? Yeah, uh, let me start with saying uh, generally I use a, a ring light, kind of like I have here in this video. Um, I use a, a, a green screen. You might have seen it in some of my posts that aren't aren't videos. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just like still, still photos, but a green screen, a ring light. Um, they don't have to be super expensive. I think I got this one at like Walmart or something. But uh, 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 in addition to, to those two tools, I'm going to need, of course, my, my, my laptop I'm recording into. I'm um, going to need, of course, a microphone that I, I'm familiar with and I kind of have set up or played with before starting the recording as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go into some more technical side here as well, but you're going to want like a, a, a video editing program as well to make sure you've got the right kind of visual aspect of it, I'd say. Okay. Uh, and um, when it comes to some of the, the technical sides of like the music program itself or the video editing program itself, I I use um, just what's built into my Apple laptop, which is uh, GarageBand primarily, uh, as well as as well as iMovie. There are some, some tracks so I will record in Logic Pro, which is a, a paid program, but it's it's basically Apple's version of pro tools which is what a lot of famous artists will use out there as well so okay um so kind of a a mix between the two it kind of depends how 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 fancy i'm trying to get with the song if it's just kind of a an easier song it doesn't have a lot of effects or anything i'll just go with with what's built into the laptop directly okay well how much time is involved with you deciding i'm going to do this song to get it to the video that you post online uh, it's a really, really great question as well. Um, I'm going to say combined time, and, and you might be surprised by this, but I want to say it's probably anywhere between five to eight hours total. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's for like one 30 second to one and a half minute song. Uh, and you might be thinking like, wh- why is that? 
um, there's kind of a lot of work that goes into the, the, the back end, not, not, not just choosing the song, but, you know, I got to get the, the program set up as well for the recording and the audio. And I got to test the audio and mm -hmm. I want to make sure that, um, basically what, what I want others to hear is, is, is something that I'm happy with as well. Uh, and also, you know, to be completely transparent, there's some times where I have to record the same song 30, 40, 50 times before <laughs> I'm happy with a, like one tape. So whenever you're seeing that, that 30 second or a minute and a half clip, just know that behind the scenes, I've probably recorded that. Like that was probably take number 40 of that song. Yeah. Uh, so just kind of getting basically everything set up the way that, that I'd, I'd want to be happy with and, and, uh, like not only recording it, but putting it into the video editor and, and adding the subtitles and, and I've been doing some different, uh, camera angles lately too, with two different phones. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a whole process there, but on, on, on the quicker side, I would say four hours on the longer side. I mean, it can get up to eight, especially if I get like distracted or if I'm like not happy with the way things are going, I might kind of change course and go with the whole different song. So. It takes so, so it's probably true we're our own worst critic when it comes to something like that. You just do it till you know in your mind this is perfection compared to the others. Absolutely. And <laughs> and I uh I'm just being, you know, yeah, I mean, completely transparent whenever I say that it's gonna be on the internet, it's gonna be up there forever. And uh there there are some 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 times where I, I have to just kind of go back to the drawing board and say, like, you know it's okay to not be happy with something or something to not be perfect and still put it up there. Uh, but it's just, it's like you said, we're our own worst critic and I do my best to kind of just kind of take a deep breath and think it's going to be okay if this isn't perfect. So I gotcha. Well, do you ever perform uh, your music anywhere other than posting it on your Instagram or I think you also post it on TikTok? Yes, uh, I do. Um, for a few years, when I first moved here to Colorado, I was uh, a full-time general contracting musician. Uh, and, and what that means is basically I would um, I worked for a company that would basically find bands, or excuse me, bands would reach out to if they needed a drummer, if they needed a, a vocalist or a guitar player. Um, and basically they would partner with me to send me the songs and tracks and that way whenever we showed up for a certain gig or events, um, we're all ready to just kind of go on that, that first downbeat. Um, I haven't been a full-time contracting musician in, in, in a while. Uh, more so lately, it's just been karaoke bars or if my, you know, I have some friends in a band that need me to, it's like a cover band that wants to do some songs. I'll, I'll work with them here and there. Uh, but yes, the, there are some times where I've, I've put myself out there um, outside of, of the internet and without the hood. <laughs> awesome. So. Well, um, I'm assuming you sing, but, um, do you do any other type of instruments besides singing? Yes, I do. Um, drums are my first instrument. That's nice. what I, uh, I originally went, I started to go to school for, uh, I switched that to guitar. Um, but drums were my first love. Uh, and I kind of had this thought in high school where I'm like, man, like drums are super cool, but it's kind of hard to impress like someone you like if you're just like the drummer, right? So I'm like, I want to learn another instrument. Uh, and that's where I picked up guitar and uh, pursued that a, a little bit bit more. But drums, guitar are going to be my, I would say, in order of confidence. Uh, then it's going to be vocals and then uh, play a little bit of piano, but not super confident enough to, to play and sing at the same time. Uh, I, I do, but not Instagram worthy yet, in my opinion. So still, still working on that. Okay. Um, so those are the instruments that I, I primarily play. Um, and once, once you kind of learn guitar and you're kind of just doing pop music, you can kind of pick up like electric guitar, or bass guitar mm -hmm. as well, but primarily just those, those instruments there. Awesome. Well, singing music, I know you, you, you do a lot of cover songs and stuff. But would you also be opening or open to doing music that is written by other people or even other pups? One hundred percent. There's actually a, a pup uh, as of the as of the time of this recording that um, produced an album out there that's pup themed tracks that are more EDM influenced, and mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely loved it. I reached out to him and 
um, he's waiting for the instrumental tracks so he can send me them. But I would absolutely love to to do a cover of one of those, um, or who knows, maybe in the future even be featured on one of those tr uh, tracks. I would I would love that. Um, I'm waiting for the instrumentals there, but uh, in the future, if I don't have the instrumental track, I'm more than willing to just play my guitar and kind of do like an acoustic version of it as well. So okay, I'm awesome. happy to. That is really cool because uh, I know that was one of the questions that came from one of my friends here was uh, about uh, songs from by other people and everything. So, so have you ever uh, tried out for any of the uh, shows on television like American Idol or uh, The Voice? Uh, I have actually gotten this question a few times um, and I actually have not. Uh, and the reason being because I uh, love singing, I love playing instruments. Uh, and it's sort of just intimidating, right? To be like, I mean, if this does go forward and I'm on TV and people like, I don't really have like a normal life again, right? If I'm yeah. like, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not saying I would be, but if I was like pretty far up in a competition for one of those types of shows, um, I, I think that'd be super exciting, uh, but I haven't quite mustered up the courage to to go to one of the tryouts. There's been a couple here in Denver over the years and I haven't quite, made the jump yet but maybe one well, day and that's understandable you'll be ready when you're ready absolutely. not when someone else wants you to be ready absolutely so i know i have done some searching on uh youtube here lately because i've been trying to find some some music that is tied around human pups would you ever consider fronting a pup band absolutely i would um I would love to better support the community in that way and show something different, uh, especially to somebody that may have not heard of or had exposure to the pup community. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a great way that we can all relate to something like music to be able to to project that message. So absolutely would, would be up for it um, wholeheartedly. Good. So who are your top three artists currently right now? Uh, currently, man, so <laughs> plenty of genres I listen to, uh, not not just pop music or or um, some of the other kind of genres I've done, but uh, I'm going to start off with one that maybe a lot of people might not know that I like this genre, but it's a progressive metal band called Sleep Token. Mm -hmm. um, there's a large community that supports that, that group as well, but I'm just super amazed by their musicianship for one, but also just their production value when it comes to their their tracks uh, from the music videos to the, the album recordings, just super fascinated that they're kind of changing up the metal music scene and doing something different. Um, so I love them. I, I love metal music in general. I love what's, what's been going on up until this point, but I like that they're kind of changing things up a bit. Uh, another artist that I always love near and dear to my heart. Maybe I mentioned it in the last podcast, but uh, Coldplay is always near and dear to my yes. heart. Uh, I've seen them live a few times, and every single time I'm like, why am I crying? This is amazing. It's like an experience for... Oh, yeah. It's oh, just, yeah. <laughs> it, just, it, it just takes you outside of your 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 world, I feel like. And um, yeah, so love, love, love them. I've loved them for a long time, and um, I would love to meet Chris Martin, the, the front man of Coldplay one day, and just... Oh, yeah. I don't know. Just like a big hug and just say thank you, because <laughs> I wouldn't know what else to say. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so Sleep Token, Coldplay, and the third one um, is going to be probably my EDM um, side of me. Another band that I've always loved, love, love, or not band, but another artist I've always loved is uh, Tiesto. So yeah. like he's a living legend in that that uh, genre and always has been. I mean, I think my my, my older siblings were listening to Tiesto when I was a young boy. So. I have to agree with uh, you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. He's always one of my, my favorite sets to uh, see at EDC. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, back to your music. Do you ever take requests from someone of, of a specific song they may want you to do? And if so, how does someone request something like that? Yes, I do take requests. Uh, I'm still in the process, um, even to this day. Uh, and probably whenever somebody sees this, whenever it's it's on YouTube, uh, getting caught up on my my messages, I get so many amazing messages from people that are so supportive and just so just amazing. 
uh, that there's sometimes where they they will send a request and I it kind of slips through the cracks and I'm trying to get caught up on that. Uh, but the best way to reach me would be through Instagram currently um, to request a song. Uh, look, kind of like I mentioned earlier, it, I would love to do all the songs people recommend to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's even easier if there's like a it's like a super well known song that there might be a a, a backing track I can record to, um, as well. But, uh, but yes, I do. I do take requests to answer your question and send them to me on Instagram. I promise everybody I'm doing my best to get to all the messages. You all amazing people uh, are super just incredible. And I want to talk to every single one of you every single day. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk about the the song that we're going to get to, to play at the end of this. Um, what made you choose uh, Creep by Radiohead? Yeah, uh, great question. So kind of a, a few different reasons for choosing this one. Uh, the first one is uh, hearing the song growing up, I think it came out in the like late 90s, maybe mid-90s, mid um, kind of was a sense of nostalgia for myself, um, mm -hmm. for one. But two, I've always been fascinated with the vocal, the vocals of the song, um, just how, how kind of strange they are compared to most pop songs or rock songs. They're kind of very, very different, I'd say, I think. Radiohead's kind of known for that, uh, but I would say just super fascinated with the the vocals, and I really wanted to challenge myself. It uses a mixture of um, vocal techniques from like chest voice to head voice to to like just your your screaming out this note. Um, so I wanted to try try something different, and uh, that the the super high note at the end that I know you're going to play here, but the super high note at the end, I was actually terrified of because um i feel like it's like at the very top of my my range with my chest voice um and like musically uh it was something i was just super intimidated by and i said the way to not be intimidated is just to go for it so yeah that's what led to that and then also lyrically um i think we can all not all of us but a lot of us in this community can say that there's been times where we didn't feel wanted or that we belong somewhere yeah. And to to get to like the deeper side of it, I feel like the vocalist is really expressing that and saying that he doesn't feel like he 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 fits in. Um, and that kind of resonated with me at the at the time, um, like a couple of years ago, whenever I put that one out. Uh, since you know, I do feel like I, I fit in a lot more with this community, and and things have gotten a lot better. But at the time, it was kind of what was really speaking to me. Awesome. Well. Was there anything that was challenging about that track? Yes, very much so. The uh, just the vocals in general, right? Because it, it starts off by, you know, he's, I mean, on the music side, he's singing from like his 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 chest voice, which is pretty pretty high up in my my range, and then it goes to the falsetto part where he's kind of like in his head voice, and then he goes back to the chest voice. So I would say dynamically when it comes to the vocals is what was very, very challenging. And that's one that I want to be transparent and say that it probably took me a lot of times to try to record, to get the, the right take that I was like, okay, this is the one I was probably like, I was probably super ready to just be done with it. I might have to step away a couple of times because it was, it was super challenging for me. I will say so. And you may not know this, but how long ago did you record that? Oh, man, off the top of my head, without looking at the timestamp, a uh, year and a half ago, probably, mm -hmm. I would say. I'm kind of going to guess that. it's It's been over a year um, at the time. Um, since then, I've been able to focus a lot more on my my health uh, as well. So mm -hmm. seeing myself in the video, I can see that it was just a different time in my life before I really invested in, in where I'm at uh, today as far as like health is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of it brings back a lot of memories, both when I first started doing these covers on Instagram and also when I really set my mind to really focusing on my, myself. So awesome. Well, it's always enjoyable getting to catch up with you. And, and you. Uh, I love to hear about where you're going and all the stuff that you've got going on in your life right now. It sounds uh, pretty exciting. Uh, and I can't wait to see where it takes you because you're going to go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so I, I much <laughs> i really appreciate that I, I i i love it i i'm just i'm so happy that there's a community that's so supportive but also people like yourself and people and messages and comments and all the engagement in the post that 
are just super amazing. I don't have another word other other than that, but I um I'm looking forward to what the future holds as well, whatever that that may be and um spreading the word about the pup community and and what a welcoming community it is. Well, I know up next is uh, is your song, but before we uh, get off of here, I'm going to actually let you introduce it if you would like to. Absolutely. So uh, not familiar with, or not familiar, not exactly sure whenever I post this originally, but uh, here is me singing Creep by Radiohead a while back. And uh, I've actually thought about re-recording it. So if I do, I'll tag you in it, Pup Twigs, so that way you can uh, be the first to see it. But without awesome. further ado... Of course, of course. Without further ado, here is Creep by Radiohead by Pop Atlas. She's What the hell am I doing here? 